As Pastor Teresa said, I, I love that so much because it really does give us a glimpse of what heaven is going to look like and sound like. Amen? Jesus uh, speaks in the book of Revelation in John's account there and says, as John relates in verse 9 of chapter 7, he says, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb, and they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. God so loved the whole world that he gave us Jesus. Amen? I love that Christmas around the world. That's such a special thing for us to experience this morning. I love Christmas. Anybody else? Woo! I mean, I got to tell you, it's, it's so much fun. I mean, even since I was a little boy, Christmas time has been my absolute favorite time of the year. And I love all of it. I'm honestly here for the fruitcake. I'm here for KOIT Christmas songs at nauseum. I'm here for presents. I'm here for eggnog. I'm here for just all the fun stuff. I love all of it. And especially, I love Christmas lights. Anybody else love Christmas lights? Yeah. Yeah. My favorite time of year is, is as we're leading up to Christmas and I'm beginning to plan how I'm gonna decorate our house with Christmas lights. It's so much fun for me. And my goal every year, so you know, is that by the time I'm finished decorating our house, that they can see my house from space. That's, I haven't quite gotten there yet, but that's my goal. It's always so, so fun for me. You can see my house from your living room window? Awesome. Man, that... I feel so good right now. That's fantastic. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's really fun for us. In our, we've been, been in our neighborhood now for almost 23 years, and, and so many of our neighbors, we know them, and they know what Cynthia and I do, and they watched our kids grow up there. And, and every single year, the neighbors will be walking by, and they'll say, we know it's officially Christmas time when the Goodells have their, their lights up on their house. Did I tell you guys about the little boy that lives next door to us? So, so this was last year at Christmas time, and last year at Christmas, we had our whole family with us. So that's 15 of us, including the grandkids. And so you can imagine, Cynthia and I went all out. I mean, you probably could see my house from space last year, but we just put every light up that we could possibly find. And then the kicker for us last year was we found this big light display that was penguins wearing Santa hats sliding down ice. It was an eight-foot display, completely lit, and we put that right in the middle of our front lawn. <laughs> it was so awesome. I loved it. So one morning, uh, I'm getting ready to come down here to the church, getting into my car, and just kind of, you know, getting my Christmas playlist going, right, getting ready to go, and I hear this little knock on my window. And I'm like, what? And I look over, and all I see is the, the top of this little boy's head. I can't even see his face yet. I just see the top of his head. And so I'm thinking, what is going on? And so I roll down my window, and uh, I look over the window. I said, hi. And he's just standing there looking at me. And I see his mom, our next-door neighbor, in, in the driveway kind of going, go ahead, go ahead, you know? And he's scared, he's scared to death. And he looks up at me. And you got to keep in mind that this little boy, last Christmas, two or three times a week, uh, once it got dark, would walk over in front of our house with his mom to look at the penguins. Like he just loved him and he would point and he would like, he just, he thought it was so much fun. So this little boy is there standing by my window and he looks up at me and he says, thank you for Christmas. I was a mess. I didn't know what to say you're welcome or not. <laughs> Christmas wasn't my idea. Then, then, he, he raises his little hands up, and he hands me a box of chocolates and says, thank you for Christmas. I thought that was so great. Oh, my God, it was just absolutely amazing. I absolutely love that. You could disagree with me, but I can tell you from me and from Pastor Cynthia and our team that when we decorate this church for Christmas, when we decorate our home for Christmas, we are honestly doing that as a worship to the Lord. 
because I really do believe that people can pick up tangibly on the joy that we carry. And so for me, when people walk by and say, we know that it's officially Christmas when the Goodells have their lights up on their house or for that little boy to thank me for Christmas, all of that goes to Jesus because we just want to just show the world in, in any way that we possibly can how good our God is. Amen. And so I, that's not a Christmas theology. That's just that's how I feel about it. And so every year it's so fun and so special for me. Um, I love Christmas time. I hope that you are having a wonderful Christmas season and have amazing plans today and tomorrow for the rest of the week with your family and friends. And um, I hope as well that you've been enjoying our series, our Christmas series this year, something we've never done before. It's called Carols. If you're visiting us this morning for the first time or you're joining us online, welcome. We're so glad that you're with us. Our series this year is called Carols, and so what we've decided to do is each week we, we pick a carol, one of our favorite, favorite Christmas carols, and we unpack that carol and walk through the lyrics of it, and, and we see in it the Word of God. We see in it the story of the birth of Jesus, and it's been fun for us to kind of be able to reflect that way from a vantage point of things that are so familiar. And so for me, I, I saved one of my favorites uh, for today. We sang it already this morning, O Come all ye faithful. Is that, anybody enjoy that one? I love that song so much. The history on that carol is that it was originally written in Latin and was given the title Adeste Fidelis. It was written by a man named John Francis Wade in the 18th century, and he was a hymnist that wrote this beautiful song about what it means to come and adore Christ the Lord. And then the song was translated uh, into English in 1841 by Frederick Oakley. And, and I don't know about you, but I really feel like this song has certainly stood the test of time. Uh, every year when it comes around, I can't wait for us to sing this song together, especially that chorus that says, Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Amen. The lyrics are just this, O oh, come, all ye faithful, and joyful and triumphant. O oh, come ye, O oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. This morning, I want to focus our attention on that first line of this famous Christmas carol. And it's a beckon, it's a call. And certainly it's written from this man, John Francis Wade, but I want today for us to receive it as a call from the Holy Spirit. And here's the call. Come all ye faithful. Come all ye joyful. Come all ye triumphant. Now I don't know about you, but I, I would assume that throughout the room in each of those three postures or characterizations, one or two or maybe even three of them might be difficult for you to fully receive this year. We're not always faithful. We're not always joyful. We don't always feel like we're winning, do we? But here's the heart of the message today, is that is the wonder of Christmas. That Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth to give us faith and to help us become faithful. To be our joy, even in the midst of trial or hardship. And 33 years later, after his birth, as he conquered death, hell, and the grave to make that victory our victory to make us triumphant. That's the call. And so for all of that, all that he came to do and so much more, I got to tell you today, I am compelled to worship. It is easy for me this morning to adore him because I know that he is making me faithful, that he gives me joy in the night and joy in the morning. 
and that he's made his victory mine. And so I come and adore him and I worship him. I serve him. I praise him with all of my heart, certainly at Christmas time. But how many would agree that he's worthy of that all year long? All year long. So I said to you that Jesus gives us faith. I want to encourage you with that today, that for every person who would call upon the name of the Lord, that would trust their lives and invite Jesus Christ to be their Lord and their Savior, that Jesus gives every one of us the gift of faith, a portion of faith. And then God calls us like a muscle to exercise that faith, right? So the Bible says that even if the portion that you feel like you've been given is the size of, size of a mustard seed, you could do what? You could speak to the mountain and be thrown into the sea. So God gives us faith. Let me read for you what the book of Hebrews says about Jesus and the gift of faith. It says in verse 2, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Another transla translation says, the author and finisher of our faith. So that should encourage somebody here today. That if you haven't been feeling very faithful, maybe in your relationship with the Lord or things that you've seen kind of fall by the wayside that you're going, ah, I feel bad about that. I wanted to do better there. That Jesus came not only to give us faith, but to make us faithful. Amen? God calls us to obey him. That's how we exercise whatever portion of faith we've received. Did you know that? It's through obedience. That's the action. That's the walking by faith. It's obeying the word of God. We can do that when we know his character. We know his nature. And so he calls us to be men and women of the word of God who study the word and in kind hide it in our hearts so that we can live lives that honor the Lord. Amen? Why is this important as it relates to becoming the faithful that our song describes and calls us to? Why is the word of God important in that, in that narrative, in that conversation? It's because of what Paul writes in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. O come all ye faithful men and women who have received Jesus, who have received his word, who walk by faith, who walk in obedience to the word of God, who daily exercise whatever portion of faith we have in the moment for our good and for his glory. Amen? So the word of God is not just to be something that we see somewhere on a coffee table or maybe an app that we have on our phone, but it's literally to be a lamp into our feet, a light into our path. It teaches us how to be faithful. But we have to do it. That's the hard part, right? James says in chapter 1, verse 22, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So I want to encourage you with this today, that if you've placed your faith in Jesus Christ, you are what the psalmist refers to as the faithful. And God is working in you and he's teaching you how to walk by faith. So the writer of the carol also calls us joyful. Anyone else want to have more joy in their life? You've often heard me say that happiness depends upon happenings, but joy depends upon Jesus. And so if we allow the ups and downs and the trials of our life to determine whether or not we're going to live with joy, then in part we've missed what Jesus came to give us. He came to make us joyful because of his love for us, his promises for us that can sustain us even in the dark night, even in times of loss or grief or sorrow where we are not happy about what's going on in our life. We can still reflect upon the fact that love came down, Jesus came for us, and it fills us with joy. 
In fact, in the book of Galatians, Paul writes to the church and he talks to them about what he calls the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5. One of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. What this means is that as Christians, when we receive Jesus, the Bible says that God, the Holy Spirit, comes to live inside of us. And he teaches us how to be like Jesus. He shows us what it means to live like Jesus and love like Jesus. And one of the aspects or the character of Christ is joy. So bearing the fruit of the Spirit, joy being one of them, is something that God expects of us. It's both supernatural in that we can't do it without God, but natural in that it is something that God calls us to. I've said quite often that I believe that Christians should be the most joyful people on the planet. And I, I know that when I say that, some people will go, yeah, you don't know what I'm going through. No, I, I don't. And what I'm, when you reflect on that, what you're really talking about is whether you're happy or not. We're all going through something. We've all experienced loss this year in one way or another. And we're certainly not happy about that. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. So the writer says, come, ye joyful. Meaning what? Stir up your joy. Be reminded of who Jesus is. Don't let the enemy rob you of that deep sense of joy that God loves you. Amen? The fruit of the Spirit reminds me of, of like an apple tree. And when you think of an apple tree, what you think about is that the apple tree does not have to think about being an apple tree. He's not worried if he's going to bear apples or not. He's just, this is how God made me. This is who I'm supposed to be. You're getting apples. Right? I mean, we don't see the apple tree straining or grunting or working to produce apples because it's the nature of who God has made the tree to be. So for you and me as believers... As we walk with Jesus every day, as we are leaning into the word of God and listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, the plan is that we would bear the fruit that God intended us to bear, the fruit of the Spirit, which will include joy. Everybody smile at me for a moment. Joy. Joy should be a natural byproduct of knowing and walking with Jesus. And aren't you thankful that it's so much deeper than happiness, which is so fleeting? Can I tell you that this year, there have been some really, really difficult times for me and for my family. Many of you know that I lost my dad this year. There's been a lot of ups and downs, and there's been moments where I've been in a place of absolute grief. But I don't stay there. Because the joy of the Lord strengthens me and I begin to think about who Jesus is in my life and who Jesus was to my dad and then I start to get a little jealous <laughs> because you guys sounded really good this morning but I don't think we have anything that we could even hold against the angels of heaven <laughs> and so that joy gets me up Reminds me of who I am in the Lord. It's, it's not something that the world can give or take away because joy depends upon Jesus and he's faithful and he's good. Amen. O come all ye faithful. O come all ye joyful. Isn't that what the angel said to the shepherds? Luke chapter two verse 10 says, do not be afraid. I bring you good noise, good news that will cause great joy for all the people. For today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Maybe today you don't feel particularly joyful. That's okay. Maybe you're feeling a little discouraged or down. You're tired. You're hurting in one way or another. Can I tell you, you're in the right place. Because Jesus is here. And he's calling you to come to him. To come just as you are to him. I love what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus saying these words. He says, come to me, 
all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. How many feel a little bit of the joy of the Lord just rising up in you this morning? Amen. And then lastly, the hymnist says, come ye triumphant. A few verses that came to my mind as I reflect upon that word triumphant. One was Romans chapter 8, verse 37 that says, No, in all these things, all the things of the world, all of the challenges that we would face, all of the obstacles, all of the hardships, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's a promise that because of Jesus, we are triumphant. And then I love what 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, but thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Turn to your neighbor and say, you win. Growing up in my grandfather's church, my grandfather was a preacher. Quite often he would say, listen, everybody smiled at me because I read the last book. I read the last page in the Bible and guess what? We win. We win. I mean, but think about that. Even death can't hold us. Because of Jesus, he is the resurrection and the life. So even when we part from this life, we'll spend eternity with him forever. He's given us victory over the things that used to defeat us. You are triumphant. I'm here to remind you of it. And even when you don't feel like it, and even when the enemy tries to convince you that you are not winning, you are triumphant because the Bible says that Jesus has given you his victory. Basically, he won the battle and he gave you the prize. Amen? We are triumphant. Amen. This little baby born in a manger didn't stay a baby and didn't stay in the manger. 33 years later, he conquered death, hell, and the grave so that everyone who would call upon the name of the Lord would be called triumphant. Amen. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. So come, all ye faithful. Even if you don't feel faithful, you have faith. And God is teaching you to become faithful. Come, all ye joyful. Even if you're not happy about what's going on in your life and you're in real stuff, the promise is that the joy of the Lord would be your strength. Come, all ye triumphant. Because Jesus has made his victory ours. Amen. So we see Mary and Joseph and the baby and all of the wonderful cast of characters there. But in all of that, be reminded this morning that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is God the Son. That this baby in the manger is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Nothing comes into existence without him speaking it into existence. This is the Lord we serve. Amen? He is the Prince of Peace. He is the bread of life. He is the living water. He is the light of the world, our Savior. And he is the author and finisher of our faith. He's making us faithful. He is our joy, and he is our victorious King. So now we can come, amen? We can come because of the promise of the word of God. All those things are yes and amen, and we can come and adore Christ the Lord. 
Without fear, without reservation, there's no shame, there's no guilt. There's nothing holding us back but ourselves. And so the Holy Spirit beckons you and I this morning. Will you adore? Will you bow? Will you fall on your knees and worship Christ the Lord? And so I say to you this morning, family, that if you're feeling overwhelmed today, if you're feeling exhausted, come anyways. If you're feeling grateful, expectant, come, adore, see him. If you're feeling joyful and confident, encouraged, come. If you're feeling doubtful or frustrated, come. Just as you are. And know that you are so much more than you think because of Jesus. The psalmist writes in chapter 95, verse 6, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. There is something so powerful about bowing our hearts, bowing our lives, bowing our heads, bowing our knees. Do you notice that those are postures that we quite often read about in the word of God? And they're postures that the Lord invites us to because they make a difference in the natural. Something clicks when you kneel. Something clicks in, 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 in the spiritual realm when you bow your head, when you reverence your heart before the Lord. Because in that moment, we realize he's not just a baby at a manger. He is Christ the Lord, the one who's making us faithful, the one who is our joy, and the one who's given us victory. Amen. And so I say to you today, I encourage you this morning, in all your coming and going, Maybe some of you have the unfortunate task of doing some last minute Christmas shopping today. You know what comes every year at this time? <laughs> Be reminded that because Jesus came, you are faithful. You have joy. Declare that over your life. Declare that over you. Lord, I'm upset about what's going on right now, but I lean into you because you are my joy. And I know that what I see right now is temporary because you are faithful. And I'm struggling in this particular area where I need a breakthrough. But you know what, God? I believe already that I am triumphant, that I'm more than a conqueror because you love me and that you made your victory mine. And if you can defeat death, hell, and the grave, I know you're gonna help me become who you've called me to be. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. Be reminded that God is with you, that he loves you. He is for you. He's already come to you. So we come to him. Amen. Why don't you bow your heads with me? I want to pray for you before I release you to table talk. Father, thank you for sending your son, Emmanuel. God is with us. My friends, God is with you right here, right now. In the beginning, in the end, in the messy middle, he is your Emmanuel. And Lord Jesus, we celebrate you during this Christmas season. Lord, you are so good and you have been so good to us. And I pray, Jesus, that you would come even right now and touch every person in this room with your love. Fill every heart with renewed faith, with joy unspeakable, and with the assurance that you are real and that you are here with us right now. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if there's anyone here today that would say, Pastor, I don't have much faith right now. I'm not sure I have any faith. I don't have a lot of joy and I don't feel victorious. I would invite you to pray this prayer. 
to make Jesus the Lord of your life. To invite him to come and live inside of you by the Holy Spirit. This is the good news of the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ that says we were not left as orphans. You are not alone. God loves you. He knew you before you were born and he has a plan for your life. And that plan includes eternity with him. If you'll invite him. If that's you this morning and you'd like to pray that prayer, I want to invite you to pray it right now. In fact, I want to invite everyone in this room that would like to to pray this prayer out loud with me. Come on, say it with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to earth to save me. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Help me to live for you. Help me to become a new creation. To be faithful. To be joyful. And to walk in the victory that you achieved for me. Right now, in this moment, I make you, Jesus, the Lord of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer today for the first time, or you prayed that maybe as an opportunity that the Lord's calling you to rededicate your life to the Lord, to come home to him, I want to tell you congratulations. Congratulations, you are born again. And I want to encourage you, if you did pray that prayer either for the first time or to rededicate your life to the Lord, that you don't leave without letting someone there at your table know, maybe a table leader or one of our staff, let them know that you prayed to receive Jesus into your heart. And if you don't have a church home and you live here uh, on the peninsula or here in the Bay Area, we want to invite you to come and be a part of the great things that God is doing here at the bridge. We want to be able to help you in your journey and encourage you in your walk with Jesus. Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. Enjoy your time at Table Talk. Amen.